So we are on the draw here. Gonna keep the hand, though it's not that exciting of a hand. We don't have much action early. Hopefully we will be up against a deck where we can make use of these Grasp of Darknesses and curve into Liliana the Last Hope. Interesting, so our opponents actually led off here on Shambling Vent. A card that actually hasn't been seeing a ton of play lately. So we'll see if this means straight black white or perhaps a three color build. And I like just going ahead and sacking the Evolving Wilds right now. And now we can hold up Grasp of Darkness though. We may be up against a control deck of some sort, so the Grasp of Darkness is... We don't know how well positioned they are just yet. And here's a Liliana the Last Hope, so... It, perhaps we're up against sort of a Black-White Planeswalkers build, which this hand happens to not be that well set up against. I like playing the Liliana and plussing here because... If we take it down, not only do we not know that we're going to get a creature back, but our opponent could simply use the Shambling Vent on board to get rid of our Liliana. So, going to plus. The issue with this particular spot is our opponent has played their Liliana first, so they would, assuming we just tick up, tick up, tick up, our opponent would then be able to ultimate their Liliana before us. And here's a Gideon ally of Zendikar to make matters even worse. So Gideon happens to attack through our board pretty easily. We're pretty committed to playing Mindrack Demon this turn. I think we may we may at least want to consider Taking our Liliana down, we see that there's a Grim Flare in the graveyard here. I think I like minusing. And I think we want to we have a choice between Mindrack Demon and Grim Flare, but probably want to just get this Grim Flare back. We do only have three card types right now, but our Liliana the last soap is actually pretty likely to just hit the graveyard this turn. Our opponent may opt to plus Gideon or just get rid of our Mind Rack Demon and then attack Liliana. So, And here's Sunken Hollow, so it looks like actually an Esper build. And there's Obnixilis, so our opponent's got the Trifecta against us, which is not, not great for, our, for the Black Green Delirium deck to be facing down three Planeswalkers. But we'll see what we can do here. Expecting the Liliana to, to hit the bin. And then we're going to take five from the Gideon. Yep, that is what's going to happen. We pretty much are committed now to playing Ishkana. And hoping that these spiders can make some headway on this board. But... The Liliana is actually going up to 7 now, so if that Liliana ultimates, this game pretty much is just going to end. We don't have enough pressure to to really pressure a Liliana emblem. And here's Oath of Liliana, okay. So that's going to deal with a spider. And it looks like our opponent really is playing a Planeswalker heavy deck. So we'll see how our opponent wants to use the Planeswalkers. It looks like Gideon is going to get aggressive here. And I think we want to just take this hit because we want to preserve anything that any of our creatures that can pressure our opponent's Planeswalkers. And we only have three one power creatures, so 
Unfortunately, it's going to be hard to get any of these Planeswalkers off the board this turn. I think we want to fire off... Well, we, ha we have an option here. I think we may want to play Liliana and plus on the Knight. On the Knight Ally token. Or we could straight up kill it with a grasp of darkness. But I like I like just getting the, the Liliana into play first. And we have to decide which of our opponent's planeswalkers to pressure, but I think this turn we want to go after that Liliana the Last Hope. Because that's the card that's going to ultimate the fastest, and by the fastest, I mean next turn. Alright, so we were able to get Liliana down to 4 loyalty, but now there's the issue of preserving our life total. We're actually all the way down to 10. Our opponent can tick up Giddy in this turn and attack us down to five assuming that we don't want to block with the grim flyer and our next list continues to go up so our opponent's drawing more cards worst case no he case scenario here is soren or fumigate i should say is worst case scenario because that just wipes out our entire board and our opponent has exactly that so Looking pretty grim here. We'll see where this Gideon is headed. So it's going to bring us down to five. I think we probably have to go ahead and minus our Liliana with the plan of getting back Ishkana here. And if our, if our opponent has another Fumigate or something like that, we are just dead here. So the, the Obnixilis could deal with the Ishkana itself. Hard to say if our opponent has other spot removal to go alongside the Obnixilis. But we are basically forced to chump block the Gideon if it decides to attack. Which I'm assuming our opponent will uptick D Gideon. They've been going on that aggressive route for basically the, the entirety of the game ever since Gideon entered play on turn 4. And going turn 3 Planeswalker, turn 4 Planeswalker, turn 5 Planeswalker on the play. It's pretty hard to overcome for just about any deck, as it turns out. So, here's a quarantine field. Okay, so this is going to take out Ishkana and our Liliana. Wow. So that was pretty brutal there. And it looks like our opponent's switching gears a little bit by making a knight. So we can actually go ahead and get rid of the knight, which seems like the right play. And then the question is, what do we want to do with our spirits? Or our spiders, rather. So, all right, let's go ahead and try going after the Obnixilis. It's going to be hard to do too much here, but let's give it a try. Let's give it a try. So we're going to 
it, be able to bring the Omnixilis down to two. We can play Grim Flare and play a land. Now, if our opponent does have removal and then opts to plus Gideon, we, we are going to just die here. But it's such a, a grim spot that I don't know that we could have done much more in this in this situation. Unfortunately, we weren't able to keep double black up for the Grasp of Darkness because we already cast one Grasp, played a Grim Flyer, and then the, the Blooming Marsh did come into play tapped. But by attacking the, the Omnixilis, we were able to make it so that it wasn't able to minus and then kill one of our creatures. So it looks like a Shambling Vent is also going to come in here. And so pretty forced into this chump lock. We're kind of looking to get to Emrakul as maybe a way to claw back in. But not looking great. There's a Pilgrim's Eye, but Pilgrim's Eye is just going to die to Liliana. So we can continue our plan of attacking Omnixilis to try to get that one out of the way. We're close to being able to do that. And even though Pilgrim's Eye gets eaten by Lily, I think we still just run it out there. And why not? We'll play the Mind Rack Demon as well. So we have six card types in our graveyard, but we actually milled our Emrakul, which is a little bit unfortunate here. Because we would have rather not had it in our graveyard so we could traverse for it. On the other hand, we can grapple it back now, but we may just not get to that point in the game. We may just die. We're already at three. Our opponent can get rid of the Pilgrim's Eye if they want to. And Gideon has been coming, constantly coming in. Looks like another big spell coming down here. We'll see exactly what it is in, in a minute here. It's something like another quarantine feel. That would be pretty absurd. But it looks like it's just a black card of some nature. Our opponents made a lot of black mana here. Okay, so it's going to be Ruinous Path. That's actually lethal here. If our opponent pluses the Lily on our Pilgrim's Eye. And that is going to be the play. So we're going to go ahead and move on. And our opponent's deck was operating on all cylinders in that game. And we weren't really able to keep up. Typical black-white Planeswalkers deck. But that deck hasn't actually been seeing that much play recently, interestingly enough. So we're going to board in our control cards. Cards like Transgress definitely come in. To the Slaughter is a good answer to Planeswalkers, so we do want that one. Pick the Brain for Redundancy, again, discard Redundancy, similarly to Stend and Mindbender. Actually, we may want the other Emrakul and the Tireless Tracker. So, when we board all of that in, we're definitely going to take out some of our removal. We do want a card like Ruinous Path, because it can get rid of our opponent's Planeswalkers, but most of our other cards don't seem that great. We can actually take out the Kalidus, I think, in this matchup. And this actually seems like a lot better than our Game 1 configuration. Let's at least say that. I think we can agree on at least that much. So The matchup doesn't seem great, uh, especially based on the last game, but hopefully this game goes a bit differently. Fine hand here. 
We do have an Amrakul, which we may not be able to get down for a little while. Certainly, we won't be able to get it into play for a little while, I should say. But the rest of our cards, we can play pretty quickly. We can just go ahead and grapple on turn two if we want to. Hope to hit a, a creature off of the grapple and then fill up our graveyard a little bit. And we probably want to pick the brain immediately just because if our opponent does have something like a Liliana, taking that before it comes down seems pretty important. All right, well, we did not hit a creature, unfortunately, so we're just going to get back this far. We did, however, put a Liliana and a Traverse, so we've got three card types in the graveyard. And that actually, because we have three t card types in the graveyard, it's kind of an argument to play Pilgrim's Eye so that when we cast the Pick the Brain, it we will have Delirium. So I kind of like just going ahead and playing the Pilgrim's Eye. Our hand isn't great. We want this Pilgrim's Eye in our graveyard because it's going to give us two more card types. We don't have creature or artifact yet. And we're, uh, we're definitely a bit flooded on, on lands. So we'll play the Pilgrim's Eye. Then we can follow up with the Pick of the Brain. And it looks like our opponent doesn't have Liliana. And is actually just going to Grasp of Darkness our Pilgrim's Eye, which we don't mind that at all all we we're actually quite happy to see that and now we have another pick the brain so let's see what our opponent's working with so we don't see doubles of anything which is pretty annoying because we would want to pick the brain away multiple cards if we could and it looks like our opponent is only has three lands available at the moment but i think we definitely want to take the gideon so let's go ahead and do that. Now we can search for through our opponent's deck and we see what our opponent's working with. So we see multiple copies of four copies, in fact, of Spell Queller. There's some painful truths, some more Kalidas, some oaths, more planeswalkers, so it looks like our opponent actually boarded out their Liliana's, which is a interesting peculiar decision to make and still has grasps okay well in any case we see that our opponent has a bunch of spot removal plus Kalidus to pressure us and we're going to take away our opponent's Gideons and we can also play this Hissing Quagmire and pass back So despite kind of a questionable hand, we're not in a bad position. We definitely didn't want our opponent to draw the fourth land. Because now we do have to deal with this Kalidus. We don't have an immediate answer to it. Although, Tireless Tracker is not a bad card to have drawn. Even though our opponent does have ways of dealing with it in hand, we're going to be able to get one clue off of it. And we can then sacrifice it. Now our opponent is going to get a zombie when this tireless tracker dies. But if it's to an anguish done making, on the other hand, then there will be no zombie involved. So we definitely aren't going to attack the tireless tracker into a blessed alliance that we know is already lurking in our opponent's hand. That's for sure. But it looks like our opponent actually drew a Painful Truce. That's a pretty good draw. Because it allows our opponent to gas back up. So our opponent drew fourth land into Painful Truce, which was quite good considering the contents of our opponent's hand from what we saw. All right, interestingly, our opponent's opting to attack here. So let's go ahead and crack the clue, and then we'll see if we actually want to make this block or not. So our draw step is... A land, huh? I mean, we do want the tireless tracker to be able to generate even more clues, but the block here is pretty enticing as well. 
We also, another reason to block is our opponent has quarantine field in hand. So we don't really want multiple threats that our opponent can quarantine field in play. All right, I think I'm gonna go ahead and make this block. And it looks like that is gonna be a trade. Our opponent's gonna get the zombie, but we were able to get the card. And then now here's another tireless tracker. So pretty good draw here. We can play the tireless tracker, get a clue, and then fire off this other copy of Pick the Brain to see what our opponent's working with. So, not really any threats in our opponent's hand. Runa's Path is pretty good. Some spot removal, but I like just taking the quarantine field here. And it looks like that is the only copy of quarantine field our opponent is playing. So we're just going to take that. Notably, if our opponent drew a land here, they could quarantine away our clue and our tracker, which would be a pretty solid play. And we want to leave this zombie on the board because once we Emrakul our opponent, we want to have stuff to use spot removal spells on. And so we can fire our opponent's own spot removal spells possibly on that zombie. So we're at five card types and next turn we can actually play our Emrakul it looks like. So we're almost there. And I like just playing this transgress the mind here. So it looks like our opponent did pick up a fumigate, which we definitely want to take away. And now we're going to pass, and we're just setting up Emrakul the promised end on our next turn. And not sure what our opponent's gonna be able to do about this. So we're gonna take the hit, the four damage for sure. We have Ruinous Path in case our opponent does draw a planeswalker we want to ruin his path and we drew vessel of nascency so that's potentially going to be mean more gas later in the game but here's emrakul and i expect emrakul to close out the game we should be able to do some nice things on our opponent's turn but you never know there's always top decks and things of that nature, like if our opponent draws a Fumigate or an Odd Nixilis or something that can answer the Emrakul, that's definitely going to be frustrating. Alright, so we see what our opponent's got. Now we're going to take a draw step, and it is a a basic land. So got a couple of options here in terms of what we want to do. We definitely want to fire off this ruinous path. So the question is what we want to fire it off on. So we can cast the Blessed Alliance basically whenever we want to. We definitely want to fire off the Ruinous Path. Let's see. So we could play the lands. And 
we could animate the shambling vents if we want to. I think I like that. So we'll play the land. We can go animate shambling vent. And then we can ruinous path away the shambling vent. And then we can attack with the zombie. We're just going to fire off this to untap two creatures. And finally, we are going to go ahead and run the zombie into the Emrakul. And that's going to be it. The Emulating Glare is not an answer to our Emrakul, so we've set up the board very nicely. If our opponent doesn't immediately draw something, the game is going to end with our Emrakul just killing our opponent. And it looks like the draw was actually a, a shambling vent, so good news for us. We can go ahead and play this vessel, crack vessel. We'll see what we found. Looks like a Grim Flyer, good enough. So we can grab that. And if our opponent doesn't just draw, probably, I guess, now that we play the Grim Flyer, Fumigate would be the worst, worst case scenario. But, yeah, so we're, we are just going to go he to game three now. And as predicted, the Emrakul, the promised end, was good enough there to stop our opponent in their tracks. Just dealing with basically getting rid of all their threats, using their removal. The Immolating Glare being left in hand didn't do anything, and that was that was it. So, pretty happy with this sideboard configuration. Don't think we need to do much on the draw. Pretty surprised our opponent boarded out Liliana the Last Hope, which is what it looked like when looking through our opponent's deck with Pick the Brain. Wondered if they are going to change that around and board it in for this last game. But we know about Kalidus. Um, that could mean we want Grasp or Murder, but at the same time, what would we board out? to accommodate for opposing Kalidus. I think we might want a couple grasps. Thinking about it more. Grasp does seem better than murder. So now we have to figure out what to take out. I think we can probably shave a Mind Mac Demon because it does just get, get answered by one for one removal. And all right, one grapple. Even though not super happy about it, I think we I think we can afford to shave one grapple. And okay, so one lander. No, thank you. We can we can do better. I think this is better. Not the best, but better. Hissing Quagmire, it's a good land. Uh, if it wasn't a man land, I would definitely want to bottom this Hissing Quagmire. But since it is a man land, uh, we'll, we'll top it. See where this goes. We might get a little bit flooded as we do a Pilgrim's Eye in hand. But we definitely want to reach Emrakul like we did the last game. That's our best endgame end plan that we have access to in this matchup. Our opponent doesn't have counter spells outside of Spell Queller, which is, and Spell Queller is another reason why we do want to have some grasps in our deck. So let's transgress, see what's going on, rather than grapple. And it looks like multiple Gideons, Fumigate, Double Blessed Line. So wow, wow. So 
tough call here. Fumigate is good against us, and our opponent has two Gideons. If it was only one Gideon, we would definitely take the Gideon. As is, though, we're definitely hoping our opponent doesn't draw the the white source for Gideon on time. Uh all right. I guess we I guess we live dangerously here. Take the Fumigate because we see double Gideon, so. We're going to take the Fumigate and hope that our opponent misses a couple turns here on that second white source and we're able to dodge the the turn for Gideon. There's Emrakul. Okay. So, now we have the option between Pilgrim's Eye and Liliana, or Grapple for that matter. But I think we probably just want to get our Liliana into play and we could actually aggressively minus it I actually kinda like minusing here let's go for it just in case our opponent drew something like an anguished unmaking or something like that to get rid of the Lily we, we wanted to be able to take it down at least once because we're trying to get to a spot where we can ultimate it. And now, I think we just play the Pilgrim's Eye at this point. And we will not mind the Pilgrim's Eye dying whatsoever. But we're not going to kill it with our own Liliana. We're not, we're not that, that desperate for it to be in our graveyard. So we're just going to plus Lily, pass the turn, and expect expecting Gideon to come down now. Um, we'll see if we can handle it or not. So we don't have much pressure at the moment. We can grapple here and try to find something. So I kind of like that. Let's go ahead and grapple. And we found a tracker. So I'm going to take the tracker. And I like just going land tracker here, I think. And let's do this correctly. And then we're going to plus our Liliana on the knight. And that's going to be it. So. We'll keep the Pilgrim's Eye back to potentially chump block if our opponent decides to send in Gideon or even Shambling Vent. We could we could chump block if we wanted to in that spot. Now our opponent does have that second Gideon, so we'll see how our opponent wants to play this. But pretty happy to have the opportunity here to just block here with the Pilgrim's Eye. So let's do that. And that's going to push us up to five card types in our graveyard. So we're getting closer, and there's an enchantment. So I think we might actually, yeah, let's go ahead and minus Lily here. Just get back the Pilgrim's Eye. I like it. And... We can play Pilgrim's Eye now. We could also, if we wanted to, play the Vessel. I like playing Vessel actually this turn. Since we don't have an enchantment, that's another card type that is going to go to our graveyard. So we're racing again to cast this Emrakul, and our opponent doesn't seem to be pressuring us that much. We're happy that the Fumigate is out of our opponent's hand. That's for sure, because that's a card... Well. I spoke too soon. There's Fumigate. Okay. 
So that's going to deal with the Pilgrim's Eye and bring us back to five card types. Now we may actually go up to six or even seven card types. So now Emrakul next turn is actually becoming a very real possibility. So yeah, wow. So we may just be able to turbo Emrakul. And we're gonna grab Ishka now, but now we're at seven card types, so we can actually just jam Emrakul. So let's go for that. And we're gonna be able to take our opponent's turn here. And that may just be game depending on what our opponent has, has picked up. We'll see in a second here. All right, well, we can fire off these blessed alliances if we want to. So let's go ahead and plus the Gideon. And the unfortunate aspect about Blessed Alliance is actually that we cannot make our opponent sacrifice the Gideon. So I was thinking it was we could, but we actually can't. Which is a bit unfortunate here. So I guess we're not going to attack because that doesn't really do anything. So instead... We can actually target ourselves to gain four life and then hard cast a spell queller here, assuming that our opponent is going to play the fumigate they have to get rid of the Emrakul. We want the spell queller to already be in play. All right, so there's Fumigate. That's going to get rid of our Emrakul for now, but we have Liliana, which can potentially bring it back. So I like the way we controlled our opponent's turn other than ticking up Gideon. Didn't realize that Blessed Alliance was opponent sacrifices a creature. So we're going to play, play Liliana, tick it down, and we're going to get our Emrakul back, of course. What other creature would we want? And then we can continue with Ishkana. And we're threatening to play Emrakul next turn. So hopefully second time's the charm here with Emrakul, essentially. We know about a couple of Blessed Alliances and Gideon that our opponent does have. Interestingly, our opponent's animating Shambling Vent and Gideon. So we're pretty incentivized here to block the Shambling Vent if our opponent decides to come in with it. It looks like the play is just going to be attacking with Gideon, though, so we can just chump that. And now we can replay our Emrakul here. And even though our opponent does have Blessed Alliance, I actually don't mind attacking with our Spider and Ishkana. But we'll see what our opponent does here. Could be a Grasp of Darkness if our opponent's tapping too black. Okay, it is going to be a Grasp. So I think we just go after our opponent's life total knowing that there's two Gideons in our opponent's hand.
So just gonna fire off these blessed alliances. And don't feel inclined to really do anything else here for our opponent. The Emrakul can close out the game, assuming our opponent doesn't draw an answer to it. Alright, so there's the shambling vent getting suited up and it looks like our opponent's gonna go after Liliana here so we can just eat the shambling vent gonna crack our clue And our opponent's actually pretty close to just dying here. Going to go down to 6 on the attack. I don't even feel the need to play this Liliana. So we're just going to pass back and hope our opponent doesn't have an answer to this Emrakul here. So, yep, just going to go ahead and bash with the Flyers. Hopefully that's good enough. Emelin and Glare is going to take care of the Minerak Demon. So, hopefully the Emrakul gets through, and that should be the game. So, yep, that's going to do it. Wow.